you're not watching on YouTube, we kind of did a new setup so we didn't look at each other. Because I, I couldn't figure out where to look, so this will be way easier. <laughs> yeah, I'll do this too, but I mean, yeah. This, okay. this is comfortable, so I'll just sit like Yeah, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> um, welcome to Rise, Rinse, Repeat, the podcast about life, love, and family. I'm Elisa, and this is my husband, Trent. <laughs> well, we are going to be starting a, uh, this might be distracting because I'm going to be staring at him so much. We are getting ready to um, start a three-part series uh, on life. Do you want to give him what the title of today's episode is? Um, the two? Life Experiment. Mm-hmm. There's three parts to it. I don't know, you might be able to see it on the board behind us. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the life experiment is kind of what we're starting off with. It kind of, the tagline is, it's, there's no such thing as no perfect life. So, um, we're just going to jump in and break it down into three smaller, hopefully, episodes. So, it's not like one, like, hour too long or whatever episode. Yeah. Can we talk for that long? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know if I could talk about this for that long. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Hold on. Sorry, I'm adjusting. Okay, there we go. It's nighttime that we're doing this. Our, our daughter's down, and so I feel like I'm talking quieter than I normally do. Maybe not. Maybe it's all the same, and it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I can't tell. You sound great to me. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay. So, I don't know how I came up with this topic. I just have a bunch of notes on my phone, and so I don't necessarily write down what I think of them, or if this was one of them. Again, I don't know why, but in my mind, it's, if you think of life as an experiment, you're less likely to do, just become complacent for for things you've always done, just to keep doing them. Um, I like the, the definition of experiment, uh, a scientific uh, procedure undertaken to make a discovery, test a hypothesis, or demonstrate a known fact. And so, if you look at your life like that, like there's, there's always an outcome. And you have to be able to evaluate it. Yeah. And so, it's either positive or negative. And if <laughs> this, is, this is a bad idea facing each other. No, it's not. <laughs> As it's going to take getting used to. Yeah, I like this new setup though that you built. But anyway, please continue. <laughs> yeah, it is so you don't become complacent. You you can test things out because this life you're is never going to be perfect, and there's a million different ways to live it. Mm-hmm. And when I, I say that, I'm like not morally, but I mean, there's a million different ways to make coffee. And yes, there's a best best way to make coffee, but you have to, you have to try, and you have to be willing to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. You, you could heat up your water on a wood fireplace. You could heat up on a gas stove, an electric stove. Like, there's so many possibilities, and you have this whole lifetime to figure it out. But never just becoming, oh, this is the way I've always done it, so that's the way I'm going to keep doing it. When, yeah, there's worse ways to do it, but there's also better ways to do it. Right. Yeah. Okay, I'm done talking for a minute. <laughs> well, then I will use this as a great cue of, yeah, so this is what we're going to be talking about in today's podcast. Um, that and is strong. Welcome. What are you drinking? <laughs> no, wait. Hold. Tell us after we do our intro. Welcome okay. to the show. Actually, was talking to my friend Adeline about that this morning. She loves chrysanthemum tea, and so she's like, "I'm gonna bring you some." And I'm like, "Okay, I don't know if I've ever had it." And then we started talking about teapots, which is why then oh, I was like, why. "Hey, babe." <laughs> yeah. 
I just happen to bring up teapots when making a make coffee analogy. Right. Exactly. So maybe a new teapot would make better coffee. Maybe. I don't know what this, the ones that she sent me. There's a couple of them that are really unique and really cool. Again, it all falls into the life experience. You gotta try. The reviews might be great, but maybe you get one that's just slightly not right. <laughs> so then it's a disaster. Yeah, it is. It's both not taking life too seriously, but also you only have one and you have to take it very seriously. It's like that balance. Yeah. Where, yeah, you have to be able to make mistakes and be able to forgive yourself. But if you're gonna take those mistakes, you have to be willing to learn from them mm -hmm. and actually implement it and change your life. Yeah. I asked, no, I mean, I agree with you. Because I asked, um, like when we were preparing for this, I asked, like, what kind of trial and error? Like, life is kind of like a trial and error. So I asked the question, like, what, um, what is something that you've had to do, like, multiple trial and errors on? And I got different responses, but the ones, like, they all kind of seem the same. And the one that stood out to me the most was, um, my phone's upstairs. I don't have the, the actual image in front of me, but I'm pretty sure this is what it said. It was um, grace. Struggling to remember to give myself grace. That's what this person said. And so I think that's also important in this life experiment, what we call the no perfect life, because it's something where we look and there's things like when we make mistakes and we mess up, we have to own to it. But in doing so, sometimes those mistakes we feel like are so huge that, like, we don't feel like the person is forgiving us or we don't feel like we're forgiving ourselves or so we have to remember to give ourselves grace in situations like that. Um, grace in our friendships, grace in our relationships, either you're a couple, either you're married or you're, you know, your children, you've got to give yourself grace because you're not always going to get it right. Yeah, no, that's hard. Because again, they only have one life and like you have a direct effect on their life and you can mess it up. And so it is, it's really important to get parenting right, but you're never gonna be perfect and you have to give yourself grace in that. Yeah. And hope that your kids will also give you grace when they grow up and they don't blame you for their entire life. I have to say I didn't do that. I think there were moments, like for a personal example, I think there were moments where I felt like my mom didn't understand me, but I think sometimes her and I were so, now that I'm older, and even before like becoming a mom myself but I look and I think there were times where we were so similar that it felt like she wasn't getting who I was because she knew so well who I was because that's what she was like and I have a feeling that that's kind of what I might do with our daughter is that there might be one of those moments where she's like you don't understand me I mean there's gonna be moments like that <laughs> anyway and she, it's just because she's not getting her way or something she's gonna be a teenager yeah <laughs> Yeah, oh, I don't even want to think about that right now. But, I mean, there's going to be times where it is. It's going to be difficult. There's going to be um, moments like that. And I'm going to have to give her grace. I'm going to have to give myself grace. And just knowing that, you know, all these things that we're doing are for the good. And it, it comes back around. It, it always comes back around. Like, I remember, I, don't, I was never embarrassed by my parents. I have to say my parents were always really cool. <laughs> I always had the cool parents that other kids were like, we want to be in your group for field trips and stuff. But all that being said, there were things that I did that hurt my parents, you know, the mistakes that I made. And then I had like, you know, punishments because my actions had consequences and I made mistakes. I had to own to it. And one of those things about it, <laughs> one of those things about it was. <laughs> I am literally not doing anything right now. And at least it's just laughing at me. I kind of just like I don't know. We sat really straight and got really good posture. It made me very aware of my yeah, posture. Because, okay, is so terrible. before we started, Lisa raised my microphone, so now I have to have good posture. Oh no, slouch! You're still no. Now you're above your microphone. If you have good posture, you can slouch. I did it when you were oh. slouching. Oh, well, it doesn't like feel like it. I feel like I have to. It's, no, it's fine. Continue. I forgot where I was. What was I saying? <laughs> this is the second time that we've been derailed. We're still working on this whole podcast. Thing. Yeah, but I think that's what makes it fun. Oh, it is. We don't have, like, we have a specific agenda, but, like, we're definitely gonna, we're gonna squirrel. Or, like, ooh, that shiny, go off on it. We're just smiling and laughing. I'm also tired. 
It's almost 9 o'clock and I feel like an 80 year old woman. I have a friend named Genesis who would totally understand what I'm talking about right now. But I'm calling Genesis an 80 year old woman? She calls herself an 80 year old uh, woman, what? so I'm not insulting her. Uh, okay. Her soul okay. is 80 years old, so therefore her bedtime is early. <laughs> and I love that because I agree. Like whenever she'd come and visit me, that's what would happen. Anyway, we're off topic. Back to topic. Okay. Do you have anything else or do you want me to pick up? You can pick up. So I'm sorry. Right. Grace is required to grow. Always things to fix and change and examples. Oh, this, this is a personal note for me. <laughs> I was going to have to give examples from our own life, but we can do that later. But that's kind of what I covered. Okay. Um, okay. Another thing I was going to say <clears throat> is that life, reality, people around us are constantly giving us feedback for our experiments how we're doing things like that's that's how we judge whether it's it's a success or a failure whether the experiment was oh this was something to keep doing or oh my goodness never do this again let's get closer to the mic why because you got quieter again okay well i'm looking at your distance from the mic well it's because i'm louder <laughs> i'm naturally louder than you it's these headphones I don't know how loud I'm talking. Well, that's why I usually take the one that you can't hear, like, off. Oh, maybe I'll try that next time. Okay. Please continue. Life, reality, people can give you feedback, and that's how you judge what you're doing. But also, at least people can, can lie. They can have their own agendas. And so, for people, yeah, they're, they're a pretty reliable feedback loop, but also you have to trust yourself, too. Like, it, it's one of those things. Where you have to really... Because we can lie to ourselves so easy. We lie to ourselves more than we lie to other people. Mm. <laughs> you don't agree? I don't know. I was I actually was thinking about it. I feel like what we can lie to ourselves about... I feel... No, I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. You just have to think about it. Yeah. I mean, because how often are you like... I'm fine, I'm fine, you keep telling yourself you're fine, and then oh, somebody asks you, how are you doing? And then that's just, that's it. And then you're like, I'm not fine. Right. So, so, yes, people can lie to you, you can lie to yourself. It's just, you have to be aware, you have to be willing to, to look deeper into yourself and try to figure out what your motivations are. And a lot of times, we don't even know what our motivations are. We don't know why we do a lot of the things we do. Because we have you have 28 years of history. I have 27 years of history. Okay, be quiet. You and me go under the table. <laughs> that informs things, and that's that's what our brains are designed, is to work in the background and kind of mute everything we don't have to focus on. Mm. Like, the whiteboard right next to us, I'm not focusing on that. I don't, my brain doesn't need to because I'm focusing on something else. It doesn't mean it's not there. It is, but like that's what your brain can do. It's kind of like this analogy my English teacher in my sophomore year kind of told me. I'm going off a story. I'm not. I'm not derailing. This is connected to what you just said about the whiteboard. I promise. Um, it's kind of like he had this marker. He took a marker and he dropped it. It fell behind his desk, and he was like, "Okay, how do we know it hit the floor? We didn't see it hit the floor." We couldn't really hear it because it was carpeted. How do we know it hit the floor? And like everybody's like, mm, you know, thinking about mm -hmm. it. It's like one of those concepts. Yeah, and it's just like, does it matter if it hit the floor or not? It's not affecting you. You can't see it. Like you said, you can't hear it. It doesn't matter. Or does it matter? It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's what we can easily do. You, you've done something 10,000 times. And so you just keep doing it and expecting the same results. And that's pretty good, but if you don't pay attention, there's going to be one time where it doesn't. You get a new outcome, and or like a, like a new person comes into your life, and you're like, the things I've done before aren't working with this person, or whatever it is. Mm. And so you have to update because either because you have you you're always living in a bubble, but that bubble's always growing bigger. Because like, well, if you don't update, you're just gonna stay this flat line your entire life if you expect people to always conform to what you're like so you don't have to change 
you're going to have the same people, so you are going to know. It's going to become very mundane. And I've talked about this because, like, where I'm reading and what I have been reading is all, and Matthew is all about relationships, basically. Whether it's, you know, faith-based or just in your life. When you have people who, relationships are a two-way street, and when you have people, like you're talking about that, oh, this one, oh, this new person, I've never encountered this type of person before, and you, you want to get to know them, but none of your old ways are working, and you are refusing to adapt and grow and change, that person's going to walk out of your life. Because that person has probably gone the distance, or has done the same thing and is refusing to change and so the relationship's not going to work. It could be both ways or it could be I, one person has been sacrificing, 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 the other person has done squat. So it's like that other person's going to get sick and tired of that and quit putting in the effort. And at that point, you know, I don't blame them. Yeah. But relationships, they both require the investment of time and energy. Mm -hmm. It's a two-way street. Yeah. So it's like that. And I mean, it's not going to be easy. No. It's hard. I still, example, I had a girl in high school who's a junior in high school came up to me and she told me she hated me to my face. She goes, I just want you to know that I'm like you. I actually hate you. You're very annoying. I looked at her and I said, okay, I'm sorry. That sounds, that sounds so sad. I said, but that also sounds like you're a problem because I'm a great person. <laughs> I just walked away. So we weren't going to be friends. It wasn't going to work because she had her way and I had my way. And it was fine. Like, psh, I wasn't butthurt about it. Like, I still laugh about it to this day. But, like, I mean, I don't even know what she's doing with her life. And that's totally fine. I hope it's great. But, like, all I'm saying is, is, like, you're going to just get people like that in your life. And you might even be that person, too, that you're like, nope, this is where I am. This is the season that I'm in. And I'm not changing. Nothing's going to be affected. And this is just how it is. Yeah. So, yeah, people come with agendas. <laughs> they, they want what they want. And in, so that's all I was saying. Is, is you can they are a feedback loop but you have it's more you're basing yourself off of reality yeah because reality won't lie gravity's always there yeah no it is it's I mean, moon, but semantics yeah well I mean and that's what all this is it's trial and error life is an experiment because it's the every day you're living and breathing, something new happens, you could have some things that are so routine, makes so much sense, like you were saying, that like, just go, but as soon as something pops up, like, there's times where, like, so yesterday, Abby took really short naps, and it threw me for a loop, because she had been taking really long ones, and I, I wanted to be, like, I kind of got irritated, because I was in the middle of something, and I didn't have to go get her right away, she was like, okay, she was just talking and playing, but I realized I needed again to check myself because I was being selfish because I was sitting here saying, hey, look, something unexpected had happened, something out of the normal. So how do I, what do I need to do? I need to just go with the flow. And usually I've always been that type of person, but it's, it's shocking how you can be when you're single, go with the flow, you know, you can do anything you want. You can be yeah. spontaneous. It's just you. And then you add um, a spouse to the mix or a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. And then you had a spouse and then you had a kid and there's less of the time when you get to be spontaneous because you've got to think about more than just yourself and I think that that's also important in this life experiment that we're calling it in this episode like you've got to be willing to when those random things happen the oh what was that like oh my gosh this isn't like anything else I'm mundane you've got to be willing to take a step back take a breather, whatever, look at the situation and go, okay, I can go with the flow, I can move with this, it's fine. Yeah. You've got to be willing to adapt and change. Yeah, and that's where the experiment part comes in. Yeah. Is, yeah, because you could have been angry and mad and then the experiment would have failed and you would have had a miserable day. But you didn't, you, you took the time to reorient yourself, to get yourself in the right head space and be like, nope, it's not about me right, me right now, my daughter needs me. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's do this. And your date was way better than it would have been. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, because I took it from a different perspective. I was going to ask, so I want to go back to all of this, but, um, so examples from our life. Do you have an example that you want to share from your life about this, like where you've made a mistake on something or in something or trial and error kind of base, like we ask people on Instagram? I didn't know you were going to ask people this. Um, oh, well, I did. <laughs> that's 
that's, that's a good thing. I don't imagine, I'm not in control of the Instagram, so that's all of Lisa. And I sometimes forget I have it because I deleted my own personal one. So I sometimes forget to have this one. Here's um, We've been contacted a lot to be brand ambassadors for things. It's really weird. I'm like, what? No. Really? Well, like, if it's something that's, like, faith-based, like, totally. I would love to be an ambassador for Faithful & Co. Oh, I love all of their stuff. <laughs> um, not that I can think of. Off the top of your head? Yeah. Okay, take a minute to think, because I've got a story, so you can okay. think like that. You, you tell your story. Okay. So, here's an example. So, I was talking about it earlier. When we were talking about parenthood and stuff and what, you know, the mistakes I made with my parents, I was going to sit here and say, there was a time in my life I was grounded for three months. I was a junior in high school. I flat out lied to my parents and I went to this club that was for, like, teenagers. And I went with two of my friends whose parents didn't care, which was probably, you know, maybe a good thing, maybe a bad thing, I don't know. Um... But I lied, and so my sister and her best friend oh my gosh, told on me. They ratted on me. And I was pissed. I remember being so mad. So where's my best sister? Well, she did me a favor. I didn't see it in that moment, but I saw it later as I was grounded for three months. I really was grounded from the friend, one the main friend that took me and the, my other friend with her, because her parents were going through a nasty divorce, and. So there was a lot of stuff going on in her life. And so in a way, my parents, by grounding me, were punishing her. And I remember her coming and thanking them. Thanking them for caring about her. For also punishing her. And, yeah, for basically giving a crap about her life. <laughs> and everything. And so, but I remember that in those three months, I grew a lot. That's when I got to know my um, friend of 15 years at Genesis. I got really close because then when my senior year started... You know, I had this awesome group of friends that I could lean on and have in my life. Um, that was one of those things where I thought, okay, I could lie and get away with it and live this life that I want because I had gotten away with it the first time. So I thought, oh, after asking, getting my answer, I can definitely get away with it the second time. Didn't. There's an example right there where it failed. Trial and error, the life experiment. Sometimes you've got to make the mistakes and fall flat on your face. I do remember my dad he was so calm used the D word. He used I'm disappointed in you. An instant waterworks. I'm like crying because I think the worst thing a parent could ever say to their kid is that they're disappointed in them. Yeah. I, I don't think it's, oh I'm mad at you I'm so angry. You could give as a kid two flying whatevers but when it comes to that word, I also know that my dad was trying to cause separation from my mom and I because again my mom and I are very similar and she just wanted to die. I think she just wanted to take like smack me that day like she was, she was so mad at me so mad at me <laughs> but anyway it's on the past and it helped me grow and it helped me see again my worth my value and the type of people I need to have in my life okay I have more of a funny example that <laughs> no one should follow um so me and my brother we were very active we did a lot of stuff but we had a, a really good friend which brother? my younger brother to I know, I'm being snarky. Um, Trace. Uh, we had a really good friend. <laughs> um, Andrew. Andrew, yes. <laughs> and we did, like, pretty much everything together. But there was a couple times where he, Andrew, was the one that we tested things on before I put my little brother through it. <laughs> it was nothing, like, super dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> but there was one time where me and Trace stacked these two couches on top of each other and tied them together. And then we made um, a landing place with a bunch of pillows and mattresses and blankets and stuff. And so we put Andrew up on the top couch and pushed the couch over. And he fell on the pillows and he was fine. Except for, well, he had to get his legs stuck between the pillows and the couch. But that's when we knew it was safe, so we would hop up on it and then fling ourselves back. How old were you when you did it? Uh, probably 14, 15. <laughs> Teenage boy being silly. Yes. And then there was another time that we made a jump and we had my dad's dolly and we tied a basket to it and we put Andrew in the basket. Oh my and then we tied another basket on top and he had a helmet on. And then he Trace held the dolly and we ran it at the jump and threw Andrew off and he landed and he was fine. And then I did it to Trace. So I was always the biggest one so I couldn't do it. 
Sure, I you tell it yourself. No, I won't. <laughs> Tracy and Andrew were tiny. No, I know you were. I know you were taller or what? Whatever. That was a lot of things more. But that's <laughs> that's me using somebody else as the experiment, as the gopher. So my mom and my uncle used to do that to their little sister. <laughs> used to do that to her. So me. I'm just kidding. It sounds like Andrew and Trace were windy in that situation. And yeah. We had to yeah. say, oh, it's really safe. Okay, now I'll give it a go. That's like a total older sibling thing. No, like I was always the one who won. Like, I always came up with them. But I always wanted to do them. Oh, okay. I could have done the couch, but I didn't do the couch. <laughs> it was funnier to have Andrew do the couch. <laughs> that is a funny story. You'll have to make sure he listens to this since you mentioned him in it. And I'm like, oh. He's like, I don't remember that. It's like, yeah, you... I'm not supposed to remember that. <laughs> That's why we're still friends. You don't remember that stuff. Mm-hmm. That's why. That's why you guys get along so well. So yeah, don't ever use other people as the experiment. You're supposed to be yourself. Yeah, you are the life experiment. You even have people come in and out of your life that help you help your life experiment grow, change, adapt, become something amazing, bigger, better. Um, yeah. Start dishwasher. Oh, dishwasher. Avalyn is still sleeping. That's good. Okay. Um, let's see closing thoughts. Any closing thoughts? Just be honest with yourself. I know it's hard. But that's the only way we're going to get through this. And then keep trying new things. Don't ever become... Don't ever get stuck. Don't ever have life become too rote where you do the exact same thing day over day and then it becomes monotonous and before you know it you're just you're, you're stuck yeah I think my closing thoughts are going to come from also a little bit more faith based because you kind of covered the general morale like general um, when we do become complacent there, there is no room for us to grow any type of way like emotionally or spiritually like when there's a time where we should be content, but content is different than complacent. And we've got to make sure that we're maintaining this faith. Now, if you don't, you know, believe in higher power, you have a different belief in higher power, that's, I mean, that's great. You've got to believe in, in something, even if it's yourself, but coming personally from us in our household, having our faith and that at the center is what helps this life experiment seem less complicated, seem like it's a little bit easier to jump out on a limb or walk out on water, um, and be able to know that it's going to be okay, because we've got that also as a foundational um, piece in our lives. So I just wanted to add that tidbit, because this is a part of our podcast, you know, we're not going to be cramming, shoving faith, you know, at, at people, but it is a part of our life, and it's the truth. And there is things that you don't want to experiment with. So keep that in mind, too. I'm not telling you you have to try everything. No, no, no. There is stuff that could totally be harmful, but, I mean, we could see what... That's probably what's going to be in the next podcast and episode. The next podcast episode is Growing Pains, and that means more than one, than one thing. So that's going to be more of the, the negative side of things that we can encounter in our life. At least that's how I took it. I don't know if that's where yeah. he was going, but that's No, that's what it is. I mean... We'll get into it. Emotional growth. Adversity is helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the next episode. Yeah. So I hope you uh, enjoyed today's episode. <laughs> um, if you could do us a big favor, if you're on YouTube, just hit that like button and hit subscribe. Comment if you want. That'd be super great. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you know, just leave us a comment. Subscribe. Yeah. Give us five stars. Give us five stars. Don't. I don't care. Yeah, whatever you're feeling. Um, and <laughs> share this. Share this with your friends. Let people know. Share this with your family. Just, you know, we, we just want to be a positive environment. Like we said, you know, this, is, this podcast is about life, love, and family. And that's, that's what we want it to be. We want it to be an encouragement and a joy, joyful experience. Um, head on over also to Instagram. Follow us on Rise, Rink, Repeat podcast. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>